One in four U.S. households are actually underbanked or unbanked. That means they either don't have a bank account or have one, but still need to use expensive services like payday loans just to make ends meet. Our Steve Leesman dug into this. He went to the Mississippi Delta, where he found the story of a family, a fire, and a focus on the financial system. Two fires in her homes in the Mississippi Delta left Farrah Appleberry and her four girls destitute and in bankruptcy. We have to pray. And we prayed in unison because I didn't want to lose another home. And, and one of my girls said, Mama, it's going to be all right. God got us that this too shall pass. And along, literally, came hope. A credit union focused on economically distressed areas in the South that brings basic banking services to the nation's poorest. The rate of poverty here is three times what you see in the nation as a whole, even greater for the region's African-American residents. If you look at level of banking services, three times the level of people who don't have a banking account. Uh, and when you add the number of people who use check cashers and payday lenders, almost 60, between 60 and 70 percent of the members who join our credit union were outside the banking system or on the edge of the uh, financial system paying high rates or did not have basic tools to support their families and stabilize their financial lives. You can see the absence of banking services in poor towns like this throughout the Mississippi Delta. Nationally, one in four Americans is estimated to be unbanked or underbanked, meaning they don't have access to basic banking services. Some live in banking deserts where there just aren't any branches for miles. Some people don't trust banks, and some people think they're just too poor to open an account. But there's also more focus on the issue. Recently, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell made an historic trip to the Delta, speaking to students and attending a conference with investment bankers and community activists to shine a national spotlight on the problem of the unbanked. Access to safe and affordable financial services is vital, especially among families with limited wealth, whether they're looking to invest in education, start a business, or simply manage the ups and downs of life. Access to banking is such a problem down here that it was only in 2015 that Hope opened the town's first bank ATM. When Hope came in, they that was one that was the first thing they did. They knocked a hole in the wall and and put an ATM machine there. There was very little business that you could conduct here in Moorhead at that brand. For Ms. Appleberry, the financial counseling provided by Hope means she should be out of bankruptcy by November. Once I get out of bankruptcy, I know that it may not be the fattest account. But I'm looking to have enough money and hope that if I have a dry day, me and my girls will still make it. Yeah. So I had to learn to say small to get to big. For the unbanked trying to find their way out of poverty, some account, no matter what size, is better than no account at all. Hope Credit Union is just one of nearly 1,200 community development financial institutions, or CDFIs, that are improving communities and providing the underbanked and unbanked access to mainstream finance. Joining us right now is Lisa Mensa. She is the president and CEO of the Opportunity Finance Network. And Lisa, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Your organization does this. You, you help CDFIs access private and public funding so that they can actually provide affordable services to communities just like this. How, how does it all work? That's right. We help get the money, amplify the voice, and strengthen the nation's community development financial institutions. We're about 1,200 across the nation. We manage about $150 billion in assets uh, collectively. And our job is to help those credit unions and loan funds and community banks do more, help more people so that they can move on with their lives. It's kind of, uh, kind of a staggering statistic when you're, you're thinking that 25 percent, one in four um, households are actually in need of, of additional banking. They're either unbanked or underbanked. What, what, what happened? Is this unusual? When we dig into this, what are the reasons behind why they don't have bank accounts? Yeah. It's both personal and systemic. Yeah. And I think that's what this story in Mississippi showed. And we're so glad that Chairman Powell put a spotlight on this. In some cases, it's personal. There have been bankruptcies or fires or things. But the good part about working with CDFIs is that CDFIs help the people get on with their lives, but they also help the places rise. You also need to not just transact, but to get ready for a mortgage, to help send kids to school, and to do the things that help move you into the middle class. 
And that's where these mission-oriented loan funds or banks or credit unions are very strong. I mean, what, what you say, what, where we talk about it being a systemic problem, it sounds like it's really hard to break the cycle. If, if you haven't seen access to this in the past, if you haven't been taught it in school, if you haven't watched it happen at home, it's really hard to figure this stuff out on your own. It's, it's not intuitive, a lot of it. It's not intuitive. And that's why having a strong partner, having kind of an old-fashioned a community development financial institution that will give you some advice, but also provide you with an account so that you start breaking the cycle. You actually get a good credit history. And they want to be there for that next loan, for the loan for the house, the, the help for the community. We like to think of ourselves as mayor's best friend because we'll help in other aspects of helping a community. Do the CDFIs, do they make money as well? I mean, it's, it, it's not just a charitable organization, right? They're not. We are profitable. But we're not profit maximizing. We seek to maximize impacts. So we help more people get jobs, more people move into mortgages. But we are profitable.